Hello everybody and welcome, my name is Elsa Ryan. Today I'm going to be doing something I don't do too much of. I'm going to be playing seriously and making a bit of a guide. That's right, this is a guide video, but I think it's one that hopefully a lot of you will find interesting. Regardless of whether or not you play Prince or Settler difficulty or if you already play a deity, beating the game on deity is often seen as one of those very difficult things to do. Specifically though, we're going to be digging into a very particular issue within deity. 100 100 by 100. The aforementioned relic of 100 science by turn 100, often seen as a bit of a yardstick for whether a game is going really well or really not well. Ladies and gentlemen, today I have devised a guide that will take you, players, yes you, regardless of whether you're good or bad in the game, and you'll be able to follow this guide to almost guarantee that you could, if wanted, get 100 science by turn 100. Now before we get started, because this is a guide, there will be a little bit of setup and I will be doing a lot of talking about how I've built the guide, I've built the game, I've built the map, because it's really important and I know a lot of people find my intros quite long. I would like to suggest you make your way to the timestamps, they are in the description of every video I put up and you can also click on them on the screen as well. If you're on your phone it's at the bottom, if you're on your computer it's along the time bar. I often hide jokes in them but more importantly that in video one there is always, always a timestamp called turn one. If ever you find the preamble a little bit too long just click on turn one and the game will immediately start. You see I look after you all really. As ever if you want to play along with this game come to discord because the save file is there. If it's not it's only because I've forgotten to put it up just politely ping a mod and they will reach out to me and it'll go up as soon as I can. The save file is normally up there, you can play on this exact map, you can copy what I'm doing, and hopefully the way that I've set this game up, it will absolutely minimise the presence of any RNG, any randomly generated event or scenario that may affect whether or not this guide works for you. And that's the crux of this guide really. I've done a few guides before and normally with my style of Civ, I like to really emphasise the flexibility and the randomness of my play. My skill in Civ is not an optimizer. I'm not the best player out there. I can't optimize the game anywhere near as well as some of the extraordinary bears on the channel. I know that. You're all remarkable and slightly scary bears. No, I am adaptable. I am a first time player. Any game I pick up, I'll only ever play it once. In climbing they call flashing, don't they, when you do something first time. That's kind of how I do this. Problem solving. That's another way of putting it. So my guides tend to be quite adaptable. I tend to look out for things like religion choices and pantheons and relics and three settlers and city-states and all this. Today, I have removed all of that. This is going to be as close to a randomless run as you could get. If anything, I will be playing slightly worse than usual because I will be limiting myself to not taking advantage of anything that I deem to be randomly out of my control. What do I mean by that? Well, this is going to be a peaceful run. I will not be going to war. I will not be stealing settlers. I will not be stealing builders. I will not be taking over city-states or taking cities from the deity AI. Peaceful. I will not gain unfair advantage through trade deals such as through the diplomatic favour glitch, strategic resource swapping. I will trade luxuries because I do believe that is part of the game and you should be doing that. And I will be buying luxuries. But pretty much all other foreign trade is going to be limited. I will not take a religion. I will not take any of the pantheon choices that are difficult to get in a 6-8 to eight player game such as Settler, Builder, Pantheons, God of the Forge, any of the common AI choices. We're going to be taking something a little bit obscure. I am not going to suzerain any city-state that would give me an advantage and because of that what I've actually done is I've set this game up to have six city-states in it and there's one of each type. So there's only one science city-state and the other five are there. I've set them up so that all of them, all of the choices are city-states where if I do suzerain them there's no real advantage to be gained. Most of them have tile improvements and I just won't use them or they'll have things to do with warfare and I'm not going to war. I won't be taking any tribal villages either because they're so random. A relic start, a three builder, a three scout. You can't replicate it. Any game can be entirely different. What's to say a game has two tribal villages or nine? And yes I know building scouts is an important part of the game but I am removing it entirely. I told you I may be slightly underpowered in this game. That's just something we're gonna have to play with. There are no game modes, no gameplay changing mods. The only mods I'm using are purely visual, deity difficulty, standard speed, 
and today we are playing on a mirror map. Why a mirror map? Well, a mirror map is a four player map with six city states where people start on like a four leaf clover, that sort of X shaped map. Everyone has an identical pretty much start. Maybe the luxuries are slightly different, but they're mostly identical. That's helpful because we'll see the other deity AI on the map and it'll give you a really good idea of how they're doing compared to us. The mirror maps also are really good at having a little bit of everything. They have all terrain types. They're small enough that you'll kind of be plonked in the middle of a lot of stuff and they're pretty balanced. Plus, only four civilizations. This is an easy one to play along with. If you've got a console at home and you're playing this on, say, the Switch, if that's working at the moment. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I apologize if it's not. But things like Xbox, PlayStation, or a high-powered laptop or PC, doesn't matter. You can run this file. Plus, games get complicated when they are at the high players. That's kind of how we're going to be playing this. My goal is to show you a game that you can copy, a playstyle you could take onto pretty much any map and replicate. And because of that, I will be playing as Korea. Why Korea? Well, they are a science civ. They have a unique district. And see on deck, the original Korean leader, she has an ability that gives more science on top of that. However, one thing that is really predictable about Korea is that the Seowon, it always has four science. That is predictable. That is not map dependent. Okay, it needs to be built on a hill, that's fine. But it's not like we're playing Australia and then we get spawned in the rainforest. Or you're playing the Dutch and you have a lake start with no rivers. A landlocked Indonesian start. A Japanese start with so many mountains you can't put the district drive. Doesn't matter. This is a pretty predictable start with pretty predictable abilities that you should be able to replicate into anything. Well, there we go. We think well, I think we should probably jump into this game. I've been talking enough. So ladies and gentlemen, sit down, make yourself comfortable, have a third helping of that bar of chocolate that you think is hidden away in the cupboard or fridge that your partner doesn't know about. They know about it. They're judging you every time you eat it, you blubberous cretin, you. You might as well eat it. They've already judged you heavily enough. Scoff at chocolate. I I'm saying this. It was basically just me earlier. Don't, don't judge me, please. Let's get cracking. Turn one. And this is a start that is quite interesting, but it's fairly mundane. We've got a couple of food tiles. We've got a couple of production tiles. We've got a couple of resourced tiles generally. We've got rivers. We've got tundra. Bit of everything. I'm going to move this warrior onto the hill for some visibility to see what we've got going on. Looks like there's maze over in this direction. Otherwise, though, this is a fairly standard start. I would quite like to work this five food tile pretty much immediately. It's really good. But there's also another quite decent five yield tile. There's a four yield tile. The choice for me is to basically move onto the fresh water. I want to move away from a tundra. It's not very good for me. Low food and you can't put farms down on it. So I'm going to be moving north. Either I could move onto this plains hill or the maze on turn two. The plains hill would give my capital two food, two production. It would remove the woods, but the hill would remain. And I could work the sugar or I could move straight onto the maze, which would give my city center two gold and I could immediately work the one three. Or I could go to this two food tile. I think I'd have better food and better tiles to work in the first ring, but unfortunately I would lose a production from the capital. It's further inland though. It gives me more space later. So I'm gonna go in this direction. The nice thing about this as well is that I can settle on turn one so we can get going with the game as soon as possible. Today's city's names, by the way, for this lovely guide, are going to be inspired by another thing I'd like to teach you all. How to mildly insult your loved ones by using items you may find in your kitchen. You crusty carrot. That is a classic example. Just keep an eye on this guide. I will teach you more of these wonderful kitchen-related spurs. 100 science by turn 100. Well, we've got 2.5 of that already. That's nice. I wanted to pick a start that didn't have, say, a geothermal fissure or something wondrous around me that was giving me too good a start. I think this is fairly replicable. Now, the game wants me to work this food tile to start with, and I quite like that. A second population in three turns is a really good thing. I'm going to be showing you this guide from the viewpoint of somebody who is not going to be claiming tribal villages. Because of that, I'm not going to go for a scout to start with. Instead, I'm going to go for a slinger, an alternative choice that I would very much recommend. Often, what you can find in games is you get so focused on science that you neglect a defense. And the good thing about a slinger is it can stand in your city center and attack barbs later on as well. It can be upgraded into an archer. And the slinger spam, a technique where you build between about three and six slingers and then upgrade them later, is one of the most effective ways of protecting your land from barb and enemy onslaughts early game. 
What are the most important points of my strategy? Well, we're not going to be taking a religion today. As I say, there's a lot of RNG involved in religion and pantheon, so this guide is steering away from that. We want to get writing pretty much as soon as we can. That unlocks our unique library. It's like a regular campus, except it's built twice as quickly, and it always has four adjacency, as long as you don't build any adjacent districts next to it. It also gives the lovely ability of giving mines plus one science if they're around, and farms plus one food. Both of those are very delightful things indeed. If Eventually, we want to be working our way down to universities, very useful buildings. We want to make sure we unlock all of the resource improving techs like plantations, camps, pastures, making sure we know where iron is. Iron gives plus one science to a tile, always worth remembering that one. I would always recommend though, beginning of the game, unless your start is crying out for an improvement really quickly, which this one isn't, I would go animal husbandry first. Finding horses is really good because a horse on a tile being revealed gives that tile plus one food and plus one production. It's a really big upgrade, can often help quite a lot. Civics wise, what are we going to be doing? Well, first of all, we'll get Code of Laws. We'll rush the Pantheon, although the Pantheon itself is not going to be important in this strategy. We want to unlock as many governor titles and the government plaza as soon as we can. Eventually, we want to be going to political philosophy in order to unlock our government, and then recorded history to unlock this natural philosophy. I should point out as well, this guide, I will not be building any wonders. Again, the RNG of wonders, you can't guarantee you're going to get one in a game. So if you're saying, oh, this star is screaming for a particular wonder, not going to build any today. Sorry, you're just going to have to get used to that. Some desert mountains to my north, there are some whales. We've got a smattering of luxuries. It's well worth keeping an eye on how many luxuries you have. These are very important. What other tactics are we going to be employing? Pingala. Pingala is obviously a very important governor. Putting him in my capital is going to be great. Not only does he increase science output by 15% just by having it established, but later you can take the researcher promotion. Plus one science per turn for each citizen in the city. These combined are really good. However, with career it's even better. Every promotion they have, including their first, a governor will provide another three science and culture percentages to a city. These this is really effective. So if I have a look at Pingala, I will eventually want to establish Pingala, that's one promotion, then go two for connoisseur, three for researcher, four for grants. That means not only do I get 15% in my city, I'll get another 12% on top of that. 27% bonus science. It's a very effective strategy and one we want to think about. The other is all about the Sirwam. This gives four science regardless of where it's placed, as long as it's not next to another district. I want as many of these as I can. Ideally, I want about five to six of them before turn 100, because once I unlock this card, Natural Philosophy, I get a 100% Campus District Adjacency bonus. That means a Sayer 1 can be worth eight science each. Five of them, that's 40 science, just by having the buildings. The campuses, not even the buildings. The buildings are unre yeah, unrelated. Six of them, 48. It's all about playing to make sure that we pop these out as quickly as possible. Tribal Village, as mentioned, we will say to that, no. No, 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 not taking it. Not today, friend. Not today. My capital is now seeking to work this 2-1-2 two, two tile. Options otherwise include this 1-3 if I wanted more production. And at this point, we also have a choice. I could rush a second Settler as soon as possible. Or I could wait until the Slinger is done and then get the Settler. I would always recommend finishing the Slinger and then getting the Settler. And because of that, I will let the city grow with this two food tile before them working this 1-3. That will just help out on the old production a little bit. My aim with the Warrior? I'm going to walk up this river and see how much land I've got before I find anything that may ruin my progression into the map. I need to find space and I need to make sure that I've got lots of nice city locations that have good Sewans that I can pop down. I don't want to move my warrior too far away though. Again, the RNG of the map. I don't mind limiting that as much as we can. And we also want to keep it around my city in case the barbarians start to swarm my capital. I also want to escort my settler where possible. As you can see, the slinger is now almost done and this one three tile is next up. So the slinger will come out next, followed by a settler. So with the slinger, you can see we have unlocked animal husbandry and there are a few horses over on this tile, but nothing really. Okay, from an RNG point of view, that's actually pretty good. We're not going to be doing anything that relies on too many horses. I like that. My slinger, I might as well make that explore as well, but again, we're going to be keeping that even tighter to my capital than the other. Now, I would like cities to be popped out as soon as possible. Often, the problem with building the Sail 1 so quickly is that you can neglect actual infrastructure in your cities, so I don't want to rush it too quickly. I'm going to go for 
pottery and then writing. I will go for writing first and then we'll go for mining, but it's, it's worth just keeping an eye on and getting a nice diversity in what you're building. Now there is a barbarian scout. It's not good. That's not good. There is a barbarian encampment to my north in this direction, which this warrior could potentially have a go at taking out, but it means my slinger is not going to go very far at all. Barbs are very likely to appear very soon. Oh dear. He's moved to the south. I'm going to move my slinger over and just move him to this hill to see if we can spot where the encampment is but we should expect an incursion soon. This warrior, I'm actually going to move it around and on top of this wood tile. I've got two turns until Code of Laws is finished and I'll get discipline. I don't want to be fighting these barbs without that combat bonus. It's worth just sort of waiting on that one. We'll go and have a look. There you go. And next turn we can fight that. Code of Laws. Once you've unlocked this, go God King. You want a Pantheon. There's no point in leaving it on the table. You want to get any benefit from this, you can. And Discipline. I've got no scouts this particular game, no recon units, so I might as well go for the five combat strength from Barbarians. You can see I'm now attacking with 30 strength rather than 25. It's a difficult ask getting a warrior to clear an encampment by themselves, but it's worth it because this will just spawn units and it'll send them towards me. Next up, I would always go for Craftsmanship first to unlock Ilkum for Builders and Agogi for Military units units. Two very handy cards there. And your warrior, never let it get within one attack range of being killed because the barbs will probably leave the encampment to get the kill and it would be quite painful for you. My slinger, again, I, visibility is the most important thing. So you can see there is quite a lot of snow below me. I'm not going to be able to find those barbs very easily at all. So I'm going to pull back and just defend my capital instead. This barb encampment has already spawned another warrior, but it is across a river from me and I am hidden in woods. So I'm just going to continue fortifying. If it attacks me, I will have five extra combat strength from the river, three from the woods, and I think six from being fortified for two turns. It makes me very difficult to kill and I like it. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, look, you can see that it did 17 damage to me and took 57 itself. I have about 42 strength left. I'm going to just continue fortifying. It seems to be holding out on that tile very, very nicely. Way better to get the barbs to attack you than the other way around. Look at that. Barb encampment is clear. I will get some era score and some gold for clearing it. So I'll just stand on that tile and there you go. Fairly replicable. It's not too bad a thing. I would always go battle crab by the way. So much more reliable. Makes it a bit of a barb killer. The next tile my capital is choosing to work is this four uh, three food tile, the marsh. I'm actually going to take a little bit of extra production over that and a bit of extra gold. So I'm going to work this tile instead. I don't grow quite as quickly, but I will get the settler a turn faster and 10 gold per turn is pretty good because we're almost at the level. We could buy our first builder, which would be pretty handy. And my warrior is going to make my way back to my capital so I can do a little pass off between the slinger and the settler. So far though, so good. A crippling blizzard. Oh, that's fun. Let's hope that doesn't give me too much grief. Oh, that is the Barbarian Scout, by the way. I wonder where that's going. Northwest on the storm. This could graze me and it could hurt. Just remember to unlock that task, but I'm working this one instead. But here is my second Sattler. Now, at this point, I have a choice. I could jump immediately into the next Sattler, or I could make sure that I have some actual defensive infrastructure. I would like a Gogi. I'd like to put down Slingers as soon as I can. So what I'm going to do is save up my gold to 440. I can actually buy another Sattler. And instead, I'm going to get myself a second Slinger. I just don't trust the barbs, and I would like a little bit of defense here. So my Slinger is escorting the Warrior, the, the Sattler, I should say. The Warrior is over here, ready to take the Sattler. And now, looking at the freshwater tab, we need to have a think about where we're going to pop my cities. The only thing a city reliably needs is at least one hill tile to build my unique district. Now again, farms and mines around the unique district have a lovely bonus, but it's not the most important thing. Making sure my city is generally decent is kind of more important. If I settle on top of that citrus, I will immediately unlock it. I will gain plus one immunity in the cities, and it means I do have a few options to build the cell one later. I could pop it on this tile. This is not a bad one. Lots of mines around it. That would leave me settling in either this tile or this tile. I think what I'll end up doing is settling on this tile there and popping a cell one down on this tile because again, two mines, 
two farms, that's fine. It doesn't matter, the mountains are blocking these a little bit. Perfection is something that will drive you crazy. Don't seek it. And I think the Sawan in my capital is gonna go there because again, there's a lovely farm and some mines around it with some choppable woods that'll help a lot. It's a good first three cities. We'll keep an eye on others. We'll unlock some citrus. I've got some jade over here that we can work. Yeah, this is all looking pretty nice, but I think just getting this extra slinger is going to help a lot against this barbarian. Oh, there you go. Okay, the storm has passed through. It has actually put fertility down on some tiles. Like, this is actually a better tile now, but so far it hasn't really changed my game fully, which is quite nice. These barbarian scouts, I'm not going to allow myself to get caught by them. We're just going to move my units through. I'll be able to pass the settler off and then escape my set, uh, slinger out in a second. All right, so the settler can move across. Miss Warrior is just going to take a turn to fortify and heal itself up, and my slinger can just grind a little bit of experience on an attack like that. No, oh, the scout actually just outright attacked me. How rude. I will attack you back, kind sir. Don't, don't be doing this. Yeah, proper scrap. Normally when barbarian scouts fight like this, it means that wherever the encampment was, it has been destroyed. That's why they tend to fight with you a little bit worse off. But there you go, we get the kill. We get an archery boost, which is nice for getting a kill with Slinger. Bronze working, because we've been killing some barbs already. And a level. That means I can get garrison in that Slinger and use it to keep my capital very safe. And here is city number two. It's even got a lovely horse that I can be working first turn. And the city tile underneath is improved by plus one food because of the citrus. It's actually a really nice city. A good one to express your displeasure with somebody, particularly a loved one that's disappointed you, is to call them an utter melon. They will understand exactly what you mean. The most important thing that an utter melon would need is a builder to fix their poor life choices they've made. I can work that horse nicely. If we can get a farm down nice and quickly as well, we should be able to get the irrigation boost. There's a lot of good stuff that we can do. I'm not going to seek this writing boost because boosting this, it is a little bit RNG as to whether or not someone finds you or not. If someone finds me, then, then what can we do? But I'm not deliberately like going to find the, the, the most farthest flung areas of the map. I'm, I'm kind of staying roughly around where I've spawned. Not entirely, but roughly. Next up, before I make more settlers, I would love if I could just improve the tiles around me a little bit. So we're gonna, again, put work in on the builder. And craftsmanship, improve three tiles. Well, I can guarantee that I can get that. So we're gonna change that to foreign trade as soon as we can. Again, I'm just following this river to the north. Just helps me to find good locations to settle. And it looks like there is a city-state directly above me. No first meet. That was good. I've been avoiding exploring a little bit just because I didn't want to skew this, but this is what I mean. Every city-state I put in the game gives me improvements that are useless for this guide. So Maui improvements, yep, they're cool, but I don't need them. Oh, leaving this tribal village alone is pain. Ah, there you go. Barbarian warrior. It's on its way. It's less important if it attacks my capital because barbarians cannot raise your capital, but they can get rid of improvements when you actually improve them, so it's worth keeping an eye on it for when builders start getting put down. Ugh, again, more tribal villages. No game. Do not tempt me. I do not need your wares. And one of the things that's always worth taking a look at is the great scientists. There are four of them in the classical era, and only one of them is really very good. Hypatia. A three library in a city, and libraries get plus one science from that point onwards. It's really, really handy. Now, you cannot guarantee when she'll pop up. What you can guarantee is as Korea, you have as good a chance as anybody to obtain her whenever you want because you build your districts and then you run projects in them in order to get a good burst of points when you need them. Now, the AI has gone very heavily for them. This can happen quite a lot. So we'll just keep an eye on that. I don't know whether or not it'll be achievable. You can see my slinger is now in my capital. I've got the garrison upgrade already for some early war. There's very little they can do about me here. This is fine. And there's a lot of space up around me, actually. We've got some really decent settling spots. But me, instead of building the cell one quickly in 12 turns, I'm going to finish the builder first and then build it. As I say, sometimes it's tempting to build it as soon as you can, but it's it's good for me to actually make sure that I've got improved tiles. It gives me the chance to get mining as well. Well, that river has just run out. It looks like this one goes a little further. I reckon we've got space for about six or seven cities if we need them. Okay, the builder is finished, and I would love that irrigation boost, especially because it's going to be next to this cell one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plan 
pop this district down as soon as we can. To do that, I'm gonna put a mine down on this hill. It means I can chop the woods down. That in itself is quite useful. And it means that the mine will get plus one science from being next to my unique district. So I'll just pop the builder down on that tile and a four turn unique district. You know what? That is a great idea. I still think this is a lovely place to put it. We will take it as soon as we can. The warrior returns. I can just get a good hit on it. And unfortunately, it's gonna just block my builder for a second. The scout has actually stood on top of my district it's even better there's no immediate danger here there's no improved tiles it's just annoying so my capital is now going to work through another Sattler it's always good to keep these going in the early game I would like as I say six cities ideally by turn 100 all with districts down it's very possible it's just a bit annoying to do sometimes right sling is out that's good quickly let's get that district finished got my other slinger on the way to just provide a little bit of support emotional support mainly emotional support now we have a look about other things that we need as i say i would quite like irrigation to get plantations so i can improve the sugar quite a handy thing for me to have tell you what this scout this scout is is frustrating me now you gonna move you gonna move yeah it's moving somewhere don't ask too many questions let's just chop out our unique district bam there it is four era score and more importantly four science watch my science go up bam 9.8 per turn that's pretty good that'll just help me to unlock other important things around my city now here you go as discussed before let's just pop that mine down and one extra production that just returns the tile to what it was but we also get the science lovely working through this settler now tasty settler but thinking about it there's a lot more tiles we could improve around this city so i think i might work the builder through before the settler no i'll finish the settler i think in, yeah finishing that settler is an important one for me to do now i have a pantheon finally the settler and the builder pantheon these are the sort of things i didn't want to take we want to take a pantheon that as i say is pretty neutral on rng things like improved strategics give an extra production and faith is pretty good camps giving one food and production that's handy reeds and marshes the ai very rarely goes for this one i actually do have one two three marshes around that's pretty typical on most starts to be honest it's not a huge amount but you can find them out if you're looking for them plantations give culture we're gonna have a lot of those as well all very good options i'm gonna just be doing something that affects a few tiles and not much else so i'm gonna go for reeds and marshes again we can't handicap ourselves we have to pick a pantheon that is actually useful and for me i'm already working two of these marshes in that so, and actually this third marsh as well so this all works for me really nicely but there are a lot of different pantheons that would have worked quite nicely there now this beautiful maze tile you'll see that instead of just getting plus one Food from the farm, we're actually going to get two because it's next to my Sirwan. Beautiful. It's what you love to see. It's what you love to see. Next up, let's go bronze working. Iron is a very handy thing. It gives us science. It's what we want to be working as soon as we can. I have met Brazil and they actually have 15 science per turn already. So you can see the deity AI never really messes around. 20 culture as well. Let's have a look and see where they are in relation to me. Directly to my north. Okay, they're my northern buddy. They are not the people getting all of the great scientist points. That's somewhere between worrying and reassuring. <laughs> means there's somebody else out there that's much worse than Brazil. Now, as soon as you meet that first person, you actually have the option to start selling them luxuries you've improved. Now, I could have already improved this sugar with my last charge of the builder. That would have been a pretty decent choice. Instead, I'm actually gonna sell my citrus. 71 gold, ugh, only three gold per turn. It's not a lot. You can get a lot more from the AI from that. So I'm actually gonna hold off for a turn. Krusty Carrot is actually staying relatively content with that luxury, but give Brazil a turn. Sometimes they come round on that idea. There you go, just by leaving it one turn, they're offering me six gold per turn, which is a lot more. So I'm actually going to sell that to them. This builder is now finished, that's good. We'll get the pasture done nice and quick, which gives me craftsmanship. Oh, there's a lot of chain lightning going on here now. Let's pop urban planning in for a bit of extra general production in these cities. And I need 440 gold to get that settler. I would would like to buy it before this settler finishes in order to chain this as much as I can. So let's spend 60 gold to start with. On that tile, we'll rush through the Sarewan in my second city, and then we'll look for some more 
gold as we go through in a little bit, which we should be able to fairly soon. Craftsmanship boosted, lovely. We've got state workforce boosted, so I'm going to unlock it quickly to unlock the government plaza and my first governor title. And as mentioned before, I'm not going for golden ages here. I, I want to take RNG out of this as much as I can. I'm going for monumentality, obviously that would help, but you can't guarantee it every game. I'm going to show you how to do it without it. Will you receive a diplomatic delegation in my capital? Yes. Watch my gold. 372? 397. 25 gold? That takes a little bit of time off. As you can see, the barbs are just attacking me and attacking me, but they are leaving themselves very exposed here. I've got a good defensive setup just with a couple of slingers. It's all you need to keep yourself safe from barbs. Now, Brazil is actually very friendly towards me. I could declare friendship with them immediately for whatever reason. I'm not doing it, again, because you can't guarantee who your ally is. I don't want to take a, a friendship that's going to skew this in any way. But what I could do is start selling horses. Since I've got enough horses, just one improved uh, strategic resource here, I could sell enough to get to that beautiful 440 level, which uh, unfortunately they've just spent a bit of their gold, so they're not going to let me do that this particular turn. Hopefully next turn we can do that. Actually, we can just pick up this source of sugar with this builder. That'll be handy. I would love to do that. Yeah, let's improve this mine, because when it is improved, I say one will give it one extra science, which is lovely. And we'll go and use our last charge on that sugar. Bronze working. Have we found any? Is there any iron? It's about to my north, but not really. Okay, not very handy. I am going to unlock archery now. It would be good to upgrade to archers if we get threatened again by some barbs, which you never know. We may get threatened by barbs. We'll sell our six horses. Actually, 22 is perfect. That gives me exactly 440. And watch this. The settler takes 110 production. Next turn, what I'm going to do is just quickly buy the settler in my second city, and that'll actually make this settler a little bit more expensive, but it means I can chain my third and fourth within short succession. Speaking of, looking at the surrounding areas, where else do I want to settle? Well, is this iron next to Choppable Hill? It is. There is a possibility that I could pop a mine down on the iron that would give that tile two extra science, which is pretty good. It does unfortunately make this a little bit expensive to do, so... Well, it's not too bad. I can put a city on that silk and then put that there. And then we've got another option in this direction. There's an option to put a sell one down on any of these tiles, to be honest. This is not bad either. Or this tile. Or that tile. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of flood playing around this that could all have lovely farms on it. Oh, yeah. I'll pop a city down there. There you go. One, two, three more locations to settle. These are all really, really handy settlement locations. I don't mind them at all. You get right popping back on the settler working by this settler whilst the gold cost remains nice and cheap and we can go bump let this rework itself out and you can see this will now be finished in four turns but it means i can get four cities out very quickly i like that i like that a lot uh, you might have noticed i'm saving my population in my capital now i am building a lovely space that pingala could eventually live and now that i've improved this source of sugar I can sell this again if I would like for six gold per turn and 41 up front. It is tempting. I'm going to keep it for now up until the point where I think it would actually be handy for me, which I don't know at the moment. It's a risky move, but I'm actually going to move my settler up to the north. I want to go and settle on the silk if possible. It's another luxury. It's in the middle of the map, but it also gives me some very quick access to some iron, which I would like. I've learned that I'm not going to stand on that floodplain because then the settler will immediately get washed away. I'll go, oh no. What's happened? Why would the game do this to me? And everyone will roll their eyes and go, oh, Ursa. Of course, Armar. Second, city state. And again, monastery improvements. Not handy for old Ursa. So, turn 47. So far, this has gone okay. Again, we're still keeping an eye on the fact that we would like six cities. That would be the perfect number. Six times eight on the Ser ones is a good 48, and we can do some other stuff to get the rest of the science. But in order to do this, we do have to make sure that we get to recorded history. And at the moment, there's far too much culture needed to get that down to the, that side of the tree. So I'm actually going to spend a little bit of time in my second city, whilst the tiles around here are really good and workable, to get a monument. It's important to get a few early game monuments where you can. They're just quite easy to overlook. Let's get wheel as well. Settler number four. This one I'm going to go and send over in this direction. Dark Age. Oh, go on, man. You see, look, this guy doesn't even require good ages. It's fine. I'm going to be doing a lot of making sure that we have all the Eurekas in the game we can, and I'm going to be building libraries. So let's go three inquiry. One Eriskor when constructing a library and every time I get a Eureka. 
Never a bad idea. By the way, moving a settler unescorted like this, I can guarantee you it is a bad idea. I'm telling you not to do it whilst doing it myself. That's totally legit. That's how it works, right? You have to do what I say, not what I do. See what I mean? See what I mean? Bob's are lurking round. Bob's are very much lurking round. Okay, state workforce, done. This is where the governors come into play. We need to get Pingala set up as quickly as we can. One of the best ways that you can play the game in order to get era score and to progress quickly as possible is what I call the Armani Tour. Armani gives two envoys to any city-state that she's in and you can just send her round the map getting first suzerain with every city-state to era score a pop and explore the map at the same time. However, that is RNG based. Today I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you how you can do it without it. Pingala, straight into your high population capital. We're going to immediately into early empire in order to unlock that second governor title. I've been keeping an eye on this because the AI will pay you more or less gold for a luxury, depending on how desperate they are for it. This has gone from now 8 gold to 12 gold per turn. It means that Brazil probably has quite a lot of population and no luxuries to go around. I will now take them up their offer. People ask me, why do I take gold up front? You get less, but you also get it immediately and you can use it faster. That's why I do it. Let's keep an eye on Brazil. They may start buying horses. The AI tend to buy horses and strategic resources in clumps of 20 for more money. So maybe we'll wait until we get 20. City number three. Bam, straight on top of the silk. Now again, Brazil wants to spend 12 gold per turn on this silk, but can't because it doesn't have enough money. That's fine. We don't mind that at all. The Sair one is cheap. The monument, however, is also a good option for this city, as is a builder. Builder is the cheapest thing to build at the moment, uh, to buy at the moment. I'm going to save up my gold for that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get a monument, buy a builder, chop out this tile, and then put down the district. That is the sort of build order. This is one for when you really, really want to shame whoever you're talking to. Call them a moist lettuce. Yeah, let it course through them. That one will hit. It'll hit hard. Ugh. Makes me shiver even thinking about it. You settled too close. Interesting, interesting. I just canceled out of that one. I, I pressed escape. I didn't actually mean to do that. I was gonna go and have a look at the map. Uh, for, for whatever reason, I thought I'd be able to go and check. Never mind. Um, I would have said probably take the grievances there because if you take the Diplo favor, yes, the Diplo favor is, you know, useful, but you're probably going to end up settling somewhere else that they will deem to be theirs. Unrightfully, of course, they'll have no excuse to claim it as theirs, but they probably will. Better not wind them up in that way too early on. I've actually now got to four population in my second city, so the government plaza is going to be something that I would like to put down as soon as possible. I could put it in my capital, but there's a Good chance that I might want to go for the Settler Government Plaza building, the Ancestral Hall. I could go Audience Chamber as well. Audience Chamber is really good to keep your cities happy, but I'm going to be throwing all of my governors in on the same city. So weirdly, Ancestral Hall is its not a bad choice. The problem with Government Plaza is it doesn't actually improve your unique district at all. So because of that, we might as well put it somewhere that it might upgrade and affect other things. There is a lot of flood playing around here. We could probably put a decent industrial zone down if we tried. If I were to go industrial zone there, if I were to then pop down an aqueduct there, probably a dam on this tile, again far enough away from my unique districts. That means that probably Government Plaza either wants to go on this tile or this tile. I'm going to put it on this desert hill mainly because I already own it and I don't need to buy it. A little bit of gold here and there will go a long way. We don't want to spend it all now. So let's do that. I'm just going to lock in the district cost and then we'll build it after the monument is finished. My capital wants to grow, but its housing is currently tapped out. So I'm going to get the granary, I'm going to follow it up with the builder, and then I'm going to follow it up with a monument. We'll get all of these buildings in. I've got a lot of tiles to work. I want my capital to be about 10 population as soon as possible. Next up, what do I want to unlock? I kind of want to go towards the industrial zone. So I need a few texts for that. First of all, we'll go horseback riding and then we'll go for currency. Now, I could boost that by getting a trader. I'm going to go for granary and I'm going to just slot that trader in before the next builder. I think that's a decent build order. We shall see. We shall see. There's a lot of competing things for my gold in this early stage of the game. City number four. I haven't got the ancestral hall yet. I can't get the three build out, but that's okay. We'll take what we can get. And this is pretty good already. Unlike in my northern city, I'm not going to run the monument first in this one. I'm going to go for the builder first in my fourth city, which of course, I need a damning insult for you to learn. You absolute pickle. Yeah. 
Yeah, not holding back today, are we? This warrior has been flirting with attacking me for some time now, and I'm getting bored. Either attack me or don't. There's a plantation. That means I've got another source of le sugar. Keeps my cities nice and happy. Also gives my capital a tiny bit more housing. Just a smidge. One little trick you can do is just keep an eye on the number of strategics that Brazil's got. If they're not earning horses, then you can sell them like 18 or 19. They need 20 to build a unit, so it'll be useless for them. They've got six, which means they do have a source of it now, so it doesn't matter. They're going to get it anyway. I might as well sell it to them and get the gold. That puts me up with 262, which means I can now afford my aforementioned builder to try and get my moist lettuce going. It's important that I'm on turn 54. We've got 46 turns left to hit this 100 mark. So far, I'm happy enough. I'm happy enough, but we could go for more. Pingala, by the way, is now established in my capital. That means I'm getting 15% bonus signs and the first 3% from my promotion. Keep an eye on that. That'll get very handy later into the game. Alrighty, it is turn 56 and we have early empire, which means a few things really. Firstly, we now have access to the colonization card. 50% production towards settlers. That's a big deal. I can now get my second promotion on Pingala as well. Research up. Well, we're going to get to 100 science by turn 100. That's quite important. We will need this. But I'm going to go connoisseur to start with. It is much more important that we get as much culture as we can, as early as we can, because not only does it get me more governors, but it also gets me to recorded history faster. See how it currently says 14 turns and 12? Now it's 8 and 7, because we've just jumped our culture from 7.7 7 to 13.8 and there's the apprenticeship boost excellent well let's get currency we are building this trader for this very reason and i'm actually going to send the trader to you utter melon because it's currently worth two food and one production but the government plaza actually adds another food and production to the domestic route so that will be worth three food and two production to my capital considering it's only getting seven food in at the moment to grow that's almost half extra that's really good once we get to about turn 60 65 though we do need to think about just recalibrating and making sure that we get all six of our cities down. As I say, six or seven would be roughly what I'm looking for here. I'm looking for a combination of things. I need to make sure that I have hills within range of a city. So for instance, I actually want to settle there rather than here so that I can put my say ones down on useful tiles like this, for instance, is an amazing, lots of farm, improvable area, but it's also next to rainforest and woods that I can use to chop down my unique district. That is actually as important. I might need to chop out a couple of districts here to make sure that we really do get that 100 by 100. Now they're just offering to trade open borders, but if you want to open my open borders, you're gonna have to pay for it. They've got nothing I need for now, so nope, I'm not gonna let them in. Sorry, Brazil, not worth it for good old Ursa. Now let's chop out this district. I've got enough gold for this now. You can see 39 production means that I will finish the monument and we'll have nine production left over to then finish this up next. We can go and work this iron, which will become a lovely double science tile. Got an opportunity to clear this barb encampment right next to my city. So I will, or, or I won't. Oh, that's on one health probably. That's unfortunate. Oh, how often does that happen? Oh, hello. Double unfortunate that. Double unfortunate. That has just ripped apart the mine that I've put down. And my builder was just off to go and do something else. So we're going to have to go and fix this. Oh, heading to the west. This could be bad. Looks like it's put more food down on that tile. So in the long run, it's pretty decent for me. Still though, not nice. How often does that happen? Gonna clear out a barb encampment and immediately they spawn around you just as you're about to do it. I'm gonna have to pull my warrior back there. But look, a source of iron and watch this tile just improve. One, three, one. I'm getting another science per turn now. Where's it going? Where's it going? Oh, it just totally raised this mine from the floor. And it's destroyed my horses, my source of horse. And now this barbarian has appeared. Okay, I'm going to spend the 60 gold here to get the archer just so I can kill that thing. I don't want to have to keep on fighting it. That would be very frustrating. I have a feeling this storm is now going to break this sugar, isn't it? So I'm going to pull this builder down in anticipation of that. I just, just trust me. If the game can do that to you, it will. There you go. There's the two food, one production route from my capital at the moment. And there's currency. That will improve in two turns. And what are we going to unlock now? Apprenticeship. I want to get plus one production to mines. And I want to get a little, well, basically as close to universities as we can. Because that is another source of science for us. And that would be really handy. Watch it. Watch it raise this sugar. Oh, yeah, look, it, it went up that way. And then it pulled itself to the north. Just to make sure it really did screw me over there. Ah. Uh, I predicted that. I predicted that so well. Never trust the game to not screw you over if it can. There's the mine fixed. There's that barbarian killed. Excellent. 
And whilst we've got a builder that could be popped along in my capital, I'm actually going to just look to growth here and I want to get all of my cities out early enough. So I'm actually going to switch to a settler. In two turns, I'm going to get a better government that allow me to get settlers a little bit faster and I'm going to start building settlers from two separate cities at the same time. Hopefully that should help push me along nicely. Japan and Japan do have a luxury. I don't need you to know where I am, so don't worry about that. But we can do a little bit of trading now. These are just strategics that I've been digging from the ground. And I mean, I think that's pretty fair to trade. It's not an RNG thing. Just exploring what you can. Just trading effectively for a source of honey. Get my sugar back. Move this builder over to go and fix that source of horse. And Pingala is now going to get the next promotion. Researcher. Watch my science. 20 per turn? No. 28.3 per turn. It helps. It helps a lot. There is political philosophy. So we're going to have a look at the governments. In order to get science, you need to spread out as much as you can and you need your economy to firing. So classical republic is your best choice. You've got two economic policy slots and every city with one of your unique districts gets a housing and an amenity and you get more great person points. It's a beautiful stacker. Everyone a little bit happier. I'm going to put the colonization card in alongside urban planning and I'm going to put in Ilkum, the builder card. That just helps me to improve the tiles that I've got. Let's get diplomatic league. I have no envoys at any city states at the moment so it would be good if I double up on my thirst and for now that government works nicely in fact my capital is actually now gone to plus three which means it's getting 10% bonus on all yields that's nice my pass just finished and now you can see we've got a settler finished in 11 turns and a settler finished in five turns in order to sync this up a little bit better I'm actually going to put my builder back into the queue and get that to finish first I think that works quite nicely and you absolute pickle I'm going to treat this city to the sugar tower there I can then sell that to Japan again we're talking RNG I deliberately went to settle near some luxuries I mean you're going to be able to replicate that in any game you play oh look at recorded history well on its way now 70 gold for the tile is expensive but it is a really good tile for this city and it gives me an error score because previously it flooded sell that excess sugar again I'm probably going to ask for the gold up front I know I get slightly less but I can use it immediately let's plonk this mine back down as well I quite liked that mine a little bit more science for the capital Okay, this warrior looks like it's going to go and sit on my new district. So I'm actually going to pull my builder, sorry, my warrior back to go and sit on it. I do have defenses on the way. I'm just redeploying my slingers. My slinger is making its way to the north to go and protect that city. We can't let the barbarians impact us too heavily here. It's always worth checking on small maps to see if the AI has gone for multiple religions. It has. I just saw a Brazilian missionary coming over spreading choral music to me. That's okay. Honestly, we could have better or worse. Yep, yep, look at that. The barbs have just sat immediately on top of my district. That is very typical of them. Most important thing that my cities need right now is a little bit more defense. So I will start to make an archer, but as soon as that barbarian moves off that tile, I'll be moving back. Yeah, look at that. They couldn't help themselves. They're just attacking this. Oh, there's a lot of archers on their way in. So you're going to treat this slinger to an upgrade and we're actually going to pull my other archer in as well. Now, in order to sync up these settlers a little bit quicker, I'm going to just do a little bit of tile tomfoolery. I'm going to move this wood over to my second city so that when I chop it out, I put the production into the settler on that city. Now I can move it back because ultimately that tile will be a good one to work for that city. Just in case you wanted to know what I was doing there. It's a deliberate little shenanigan. There's apprenticeship. That means I can build industrial zones, but most importantly, my mines now have plus one production, which means that my cities now have a lot more production. A lot more. Bam. One four and one science because of the cell one. It's just delightful. Okay, the archer is making its way over, which is a little bit problematic. My reinforcements are almost here, but I don't want my archer to be hit. So I'm just going to pull away from the river, get one shot in. And with this warrior, that's a hill. I don't think they can fire over the top of that one. So I'm just going to leave my warrior up there for a turn. We'll see if we regret that one. My builder is going to improve this tile, not this one because the sale one is going to improve that by a little bit. So we'll get this district down. It's 11 turns. That's okay. Should probably get walls up, shouldn't I? 
Let's get masonry. Let's see how the barbarians deploy here. Yes, look, the archer actually did move there. So that was perfect for me. My reinforcements have arrived, which is really nice. We get one shot in there. This archer can move across and start to pepper that archer, which is great because now I can move back on top of my unique district, protect it, finish it, get the science. This settler is now complete. I'm going to send this one over to this settling location and this one will go to this one. That will give us uh, six cities. We actually have no builders popping out at the moment at all, so I'm going to put Put a gogi in that let me build that archer quicker no i'm gonna get discipline in at least i can use the units but i'm using a little bit tougher there is a lot of woods down here that i could chop out if i wanted to uh, settling down in the snow is normally a really bad idea because there's generally not very good tiles to use down there at all I'm trying to work out if six cities or seven is going to be the magic number for me it's basically timesing it by eight that's how many unique districts i'm going to get so six cities would give me 48 science seven would give me 56 i think we've got the time and i want to get that output done now i will always always thank myself later so we'll get one more settler going yes i know i'm losing population from my capital but it's fine we can repair that easily recorded history let's go okay yep the barbarians are attacking me now but it's okay because because reinforcements are here and we're doing everything we need to do there's one archer killed there all you need to do mr warrior is just survive D do as i say not as i do don't send your settlers out unescorted it'll never go well <laughs> for defensive purposes i could go for crossbows for scientific purposes i could go for universities so i'm gonna go mathematics to go for universities now You'll have noticed as well, I never made a play at the Great Scientists. I was thinking about it and I wanted to keep this guide away from Great Scientists so that it was as much RNG taken out of the equation as possible. You can obviously rush the Great Scientist that gives you better libraries. That is a very, very sensible choice. But if you're wondering why I didn't do it, that's exactly why. There you go. My archers are here. They are clearing out the barbarians with great, great anger. And we are doing fine now. So this resource, this sheep, would give a really good pasture on a hill, but it's also next to one of my districts. So what I'm going to do, again, a little bit of tile shenanigans. I'm going to swap it with my capital, harvest the food to give my capital more population, and now put it back to the city that needs a little bit more production. Jammy. That's what that is. Jammy. My gold, by the way, I am saving up my gold to buy builders in the cities that I deploy. Just in case you were wondering what's going on there. And I'm just selling my resources still. Not getting a huge amount of gold, but it's all builder gold and that's what matters. Okay, with that, I think the barbarians are now dealt with and done. So we'll let my warrior heal up. I'm just going to move this archer over to go and belatedly escort this settler, or at least attempt to. And you can see my capital now has the beauty of another plus three thumb. I don't even need to work it. That's how good the tiles are in that city. There is another two production mine, and that'll just help this sale one finish. And this settler is now finished as well. So we've got this one heading in that direction. This one can head in this direction. Although, do I want to belatedly send this one in this direction instead? There is citrus over there for me to work if I'd want it. And lots of woods in this area to build the sail one hmm yep i'm actually going to send it down in this direction i think mine wise best mines are kind of in this area i will pop sail one down on that tile and i will try and settle on top of the citrus just so that i've got access to it immediately we'll see if that works probably won't now i want to time my libraries so that they finish as many libraries as i can by turn 100 so if i am able to delay building the libraries i will i can in my second city so i will start pumping builders out and we'll do a rejig of my government in a second as well just to really emphasize that one recorded history this is korea's favorite card discipline i no longer need that colonization i'm barely making settlers now seven cities will be plenty i know i'm still working one of my capital but actually adding a turn to that is fine let's put builders in urban planning and natural philosophy that is worth 12 science per turn at the moment that puts me to 56 we have almost caught up with deity brazil let me tell you that in itself is an achievement a real achievement deity Brazil does not hold back and look already we have 15% from Pingala on science and 9% from my promotions I've got a bit of a choice here I could continue promoting Pingala and give myself a hundred percent great people points this would rush me some more scientist points and it would give me three percent extra science that's effectively worth about one science per turn at the moment it's not worth it instead I'm actually going to take Liang and pop her down in my second city that will give me fire uh, yeah an extra charge in my builder little gains little gains but still worth it 
Now that I've got recorded history, we're going to unlock Mysticism. That'll give me an Envoy that I can throw at a city-state, although I haven't found any science city-states, so there's nothing really that's helping me. We know that I've put one in this game. I think I mentioned that at the start. I wanted to just rig it so that there wasn't an unfair amount of them in the game. But in a typical game of Civ, you're going to find at least one city-state that follows a doctrine that you are enjoying, so it's worth playing it as you see it. Military tradition, there you go. I'm going to use my Envoy. I'm not going to game this, so I'm just going to pick a city-state that gives me the most and right now an extra culture in my capital is more important so we'll just pop you down there it's also easier to become suzerain of that city state and here is city five oh, i always forget settling on the wheat if it's on our planes doesn't give you anything ah oh, never mind genuine mistake you could call me in fact a slobbery crumpet oh just it just puts fear in you Later in the game, you'll unlock feudalism, which will give you serfdom, which means your builders get an extra two charges. But for now, we'll just buy our builders as I settle the cities. So we'll just get one immediately. And I think I'm actually just going to chop my district out pretty quickly. So we will buy the tile immediately and just start building it. There is mathematics. Well, that means we can now go for education and universities. First things first, I'm going to just pop a farm down on that wheat. It's going to get improved by my district. It's a good use. And then I'll go and chop down these two tiles. The rainforest will put me to two population really quickly. And then the wood will hopefully finish my district. Again, don't do this, people. Don't send your settlers unescorted. It's not clever. It's not brave. It's not funny. It's just stupid. Again, I've got a little bit of time. We're on turn 75. I can afford to delay the library a little bit, so I shall. Let's get one more builder in this city as well. We're just stringing this along as much as we can. Sewan is finished in this city. That rockets my science up to 63 per turn. So we've almost caught up with the turn timer already. It's normally a good sign. 100 by 100. This is the goal. This is the only goal in this playthrough. There's the Barb Encampment destroyed. Bit of era score. Lovely. One more envoy in this city state. It is useless but it will give me a little bit of visibility on the map and actually some era score and proof that brazil is just to my north as i say we're not doing anything warlike in this game we will not be employing war at all but it's good to know where brazil is my final settler is finished in my capital excellent news wonders are really available to you right now it's worth delaying wonders seeing what the game will give you later on again in this playthrough i am not going to be building any wonders i want to get to turn or 100 by 100 without them just so you can see them there as options again builders always get your builders out as quick as you can i've got time every city is doing it right now one two three four five lovely well now that i'm a little safer from barbs my starting units i'm going to start moving around the map now I want to find the other city-states. I want to find anything else on the map that could be useful. I want to just discover as much information about this map as we can. It's about balancing that early game need for security with your late game need for good exploration. Now, I don't remember if you need to wait a turn for Liang to be established before you finish the builder, or will it give me an extra charge? I don't want to take the risk. I'm just going to delay that by one turn. Put a turn's worth of production into a library, like so, and then finish it. And then we can just guarantee that we'll get it. You know, there's no need to take that risk. Builder is now finished in my capital. It's amazing how much science Japan's got as well. This just shows you how effective 100 by 100 is at just staying in touch with Deity AI because the bonuses they get mean that this science, this is trivial for them. This is very regular amounts of science. Best thing my capital can focus on, apart from the library, which I will finish by turn 100, is food. Pingala is more effective the bigger the city is. So let's get a water mill, an extra food in the city center, and an extra food on this maze. Beautiful. Let's chop this rainforest out. Uh, if you've watched me play Civ enough, you'll know that I have very little respect for rainforest in this game, and I often feel very bad about that. But it's just too good to chop. It's too good to chop. What can I say? To get food and production from a tile whenever you do it. Oh, it's wonderful. We need seven era score, by the way, to get into a golden age. I'm not going to bother rushing it. I'm just going to let the game progress. Again, I just want to show you that Golden Ages, Dark Ages, none of it matters. I'm not using any Dark Age cards. I'm not using any Golden Age policies. This is just me enjoying the game, playing it as I see it. Always remember to put your farms down around your unique districts. And you can see I now have the option to start building libraries in a lot of these cities. I think I actually will. 
Although it makes sense, in theory, to put industrial uh, zones down in the cities that I allow for it. Extra production is always good. Doesn't really matter at this point. I'm pretty confident in what we're doing, what we've managed to achieve. It's all pretty good. This is city number six. You don't need any more than this. This would be fine. The fact that I've got a seventh city is just a product of a really good start. Saving up a little bit of gold to afford that early game builder. When in doubt, put a couple of turns of production towards the builder. But as you can see, we can sell the citrus I've just settled on. It's an excess copy and I can just immediately buy that builder and just bypass all of this entirely by doing what I did in the other city and just getting this sale one down immediately. You can see 33 turns, not gonna finish by turn 100, but we can rush that. The city will grow and we can chop it out. You absolute bloated cupcake, you. I see a really good farm triangle in this area for my capital to improve the food growth. So I'm just gonna start clearing some forest and we can rush this water mill as well, which is quite a nice thing. That is a good place for an industrial zone actually. Nice little plus one production. It's out of the way, I can chop it out and there are possibilities to put aqueducts on it later. So I'll move my builder over to chop that out in a second. In the meantime, yeah, capital, start to build the library. Let's get some of this bonus science out now. Feudalism boosted. Always good to boost feudalism. Building six farms when you're playing career. Normally means you're using your unique districts very nicely indeed. Samarkand, another city-state that we found. Not one that interests us. We keep looking. We keep finding what the map has to offer. There we go. The seventh city is just about to get formed as well. Education is finished on turn 82. My library in my capital is just about to finish. That's looking really nice. We have another builder finished in this city. Well, we're just flipping them over to getting these libraries finished now. This builder will finish in three turns. This cell one will finish in one turn. I have access to another luxury now in this jade, which is also a mine next to my unique district, which is wonderful. It keeps all of my cities as happy as they're going to get. My capital, unfortunately, is only plus two now. Don't worry, that's fine. We, we, we can live with that. And here is city number seven. I have no gold to get the builder in this one, but luckily I have a builder that I had prepared earlier. You intangible teabag. Yes, are you quaking in your boots? I really do. Construction, let's get lumber mills. That means I don't have to necessarily chop all of my woods down. Although, let's be honest, that's probably exactly what I'm gonna continue doing. Brussels, again, not a bad city-state, but not one we're really looking for. That is a big swing. We've just gone from 66 science to 79 with the completion of one more district and the library in the capital. Oh, that's looking good. I could double cement that in by getting a university or I could go for the industrial zone. I think we've got an option to finish the university before turn 100, so we should. Especially in my capital, 15% bonus science, but another 9%. All stacks upon that university, so we might as well do it. Let's remove the woods. Boop, saves two turns on it. Excellent stuff. Turn 83, library finishes in 15 turns. We've got 17 left. Perfect, that city is doing everything we need it to. And moist lettuce is going to do the same thing. It should have exactly the right amount of time. I can now afford this tile, which is lovely. So let's remove the builder, leave the build queue absolutely empty so that when I chop this wood down, the 54 production will just be excess and stacked to the next object. You can see the sale one is 15 turns and requires 73 production. But if I chop this out with an empty city, you see it now says four turns because it is now applied all of that production into the district. Doesn't show it, but 15 down to four, that's exactly makes sense. If you were curious, I'm making my way down to machinery. I'd like at least a couple of crossbows that would very much protect my units from any barb incursion. I do have a couple of archers just littered around, keeping everyone safe. It just helps to keep everyone safe. Again, I don't like cutting down woods on tundra because nothing else can be put on tundra, but for the purposes of getting 100 by 100, this city just needs this finished. So, Bam, there you go, it's finished. I can't actually finish this library in time. So instead, I'll start doing it, but it's not essential. You can see, look, 88 signs. We still have 15 turns spare. The Fountain of Youth, right in the middle of the map. I like it, it's forbidden. Engineering, defensive tactics, go on to machinery now. 91 science per turn because this city has just finished. Start pumping out more builders and another governor. I will treat myself to grants. This just gives my capital as much science as I want to throw at it. 
and even more science points, especially when this university finishes. We're going to get even more great people points. I've actually now met plus eight. Look at that. Every single person on plus eight. This game, so sciencey. And on turn 88, that Seowon finishes. Have a look at the Empire view. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus four districts, all doubled with natural philosophy, generating the 56 science. Combined with the iron mines, the general mines, the libraries, and Pingala science, we have hit 101 science by turn 88. 12 turns to spare, ladies and gentlemen. But there you go. Definitive proof. 100 science before turn 100. I hope you agree that this shows with the right leader, you can pretty much avoid any randomness, and you, on deity, can repeat this yourself on any game, on any map, provided it's, you know, a reasonable map. If we're talking like a seven tile frozen tundra island, then, then yes, maybe you've got a problem. But we didn't use a single tribal hut. We didn't use a single extra pantheon. We didn't use really any city states to give us any bonuses. I didn't do any abuse for trading with the AI. We didn't war. We removed randomness as much as we could from this playthrough. I think everything I did today is very, very replicable. It's even not really map dependent. The only thing I need is hills. If you're playing a game with any hills your map is weird the guide element of this video is now ending here i really hope you enjoyed it thank you so much for watching i am actually going to continue playing this the gloves are off i'm going to remove all the self-imposed rules and we're going to just go a bit crazy and i'm just going to use this as a base to then play the rest of the game out because quite frankly i'm really enjoying this so stick around the playlist will continue after here but the guide element is now done let me know in the comments what you think let me know if there's any improvements any suggestions that you would employ to make this a little bit better but more importantly, come along to Discord and let me know. I want to see you all have a go at this. Can you replicate my 100 by 100? Especially if you've never played Deity before. And even more especially if you do play a Deity quite often and you fancy a little bit of a strategy that, especially in multiplayer, is very replicable. Because imagine, imagine if you were using secret societies. Or maybe you did get that early game scientist. Or you did pick up Etiman Anki or another wonder. Ladies and gentlemen, there are so many ways this strategy could get even better. But for now, that's me gone. Stick around if you want to see the series continue, but to everyone else, goodbye! And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Clint Hennis, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalek, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Rom88, Radio Torre, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boyzoro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedge, Mushkin Mandeltort, Ezri Dax, Deeble Time, Burial, I'm Daft, Guberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Zursa. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye!